Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. to the Savage Nation. We have lost another battle after many battles that have been lost. But we have not lost the war. We have not lost the war. We have not lost the war. And I want to remind you of something. You may not know this because of the revisionist history, but did you know that the United States of America and her allies almost lost World War II? That's correct. In the early days of the war, Germany was winning every battle. Japan took one island nation after another. The United States almost lost World War II. But then something happened. The people never gave up. The American people needed a leader. They had a leader. And he marshaled the people towards victory against the Nazis and against the Japanese imperialists. We are in a similar situation today in the United States of America. With Hillary's kabuki play last week before the false Republican hearing conducted by that shameful Trey Gowdy, who I had faith in prior to that, uh, that charade, I realized it was a charade, and I said so last week. They anointed Hillary Clinton as the leading candidate. Now, we know Trump, if he gets to the finish line, can probably beat her. It's not 100% sure that he can beat her. The people like him, they hate her. They distrust her. But that's not the issue. The issue is the American people. The issue is the American government. The issue is America itself. We are being overrun. Our borders, language, and culture are being decimated. There's an extremely telling picture of what is happening in Europe right now and how it will affect America very soon unless Barry from Honolulu is sent a very clear message. If you go to michaelsavage.com, there's a picture I have. I don't know where they got it from. It looks like army ants invading a nest. It stretches for tens of miles of Muslims pouring into Europe, walking through the wheat fields, marching triumphantly without firing a shot. Because as I said to you last week, and this is very serious business, Hitler invaded other nations to impose the Germanic and Nazi views upon them. Merkel and Obama are invading their own nations in order to impose third world, I wouldn't even say views upon us, just impose the third world and crush out everything good in this nation. I stand by those words. As you all well know, my great new book is out tomorrow, Government Zero. And you know what a momentous week this is going to be for me. But it's really not about me. And I have to repeat it again until you finally get it through your most cynical views. And I'm as cynical as you are. You know, I'm really cynical. I don't trust anybody or anything. I'm sorry, that's the way I am. There are people who trust everybody and everything. They're called Pollyannas. And then there are people who trust virtually nobody, nor anything they read. They're people like me. I've come to see everything as a lie. And so how do you tell the truth? How do you decide what's real? How do you know what to do? Well, you have to decide that for yourself. I can't tell you what to believe and what to, what to do. I can tell you this. Common sense would dictate that no nation on earth has ever willingly turned itself over to a foreign invader without having lost a war. And we have a very, very, very able general on the other side in the White House. 
Never underestimate him. I've told you this for seven years now. He is the most able general of the left in history. He's more able than Marx and Lenin put together because he's smoother than them. And what he is accomplishing in this country, in this world, without firing a shot against the civilian population is utterly astounding. Now, there are many reasons that Barry is able to get away with this. One, because he's brilliant. Two, because he's willful. Three, because he has a compliant, non-existent uh, fourth estate, better known as the news media. And that's where I come in. For 21 years, I've stood on this, not exactly this microphone, but a, a place like this in one of my studios. Day in, day out. Rain, shine, heat, sickness, health. And I've preached the gospel of borders, language, and culture. And let me tell you something. Many of you have heard the message, but not the Republican Party, certainly. And we know that the Democrat, socialist, Islamist machine has heard the message and they've said, the hell with our borders, the hell with our language, the hell with our culture. Flood them in. Bring them in. Let the army ants come. Let's change the demographics of America so we can bamboozle the public for the next hundred years. They're power mad. And I'll tell you something else. Here is another problem. A very uncomfortable problem that I have to mention. The entire Republican, the entire conservative media, with rare exception, has pushed the wrong message. And as a result, they've pushed women and minorities and gays into the Democrat fold. Instead of talking about borders, language, and culture, as I have done since 1994, they've been hammering abortion, gays, and women's rights calling them feminazis, attacking gays, uh, talking about abortion. Now, these are important issues, but they're not the most important issues. The most important issues are the most fundamental issues, borders, language, and culture. And so when you have people on the radio who are hammering over and over again issues such as abortion, gays, uh, calling uh, the women's movement feminazis, you understand what that's done, don't you? It's driven many, many millions of women and young people away from the conservative message, away from the nationalist message that I am going to profess to you today as I have for the last 21 years. Borders, language, and culture. I'm also going to talk about the new book, Government Zero. I'm going to talk about it because I need you to do something. And I want to tell you something funny. I put a Facebook post up yesterday, last night, and 51,000 people went on to this, I don't know what you call them, views, social media, whatever, Here's what I said. I said I am officially blacklisted by every MSM outlet in the world. Fox, Rush, Hannity will never mention Michael Savage. They will have pimps, murderers, rapists, ISIS members on their shows, but not the most independent voice in American media, Michael Savage. They do not mention my name, as was the case with leading writers in the ex-Soviet Union. I need you to please go to a bookstore this Tuesday, Wednesday, or any day thereafter, and send the phonies a message. Please consider buying a copy of my most important book yet, Government Zero. If we can get it into the New onto the New York Times bestseller list without this media cartel, without this cartel, we can show that we the people own our own lives, that we vote, and that we know who they are. I then concluded by saying, God bless you and God bless America, Michael Savage. 52,000 people within a few hours went on to that. Now, maybe that's not as big as some, but it's very big for me. It's plenty big for me. And I want to talk again now about the war. Many of you have misinterpreted the Drudge headline. It's the biggest headline of the year. And it says, with a cover of my book, Government Zero, Michael Savage declares we've lost the battle. And you want to hear what happened as a result of the Drudge headline? First of all, I want to thank Matt Drudge. I want to thank Breitbart. They stand out amongst the entire conglomeration, along with World Net Daily and Newsmax. But today, i got to thank these people. I mean, they're not personal friends of mine. I never thought it would happen. But they've shown that they put the nation above petty politics. They've shown that they know how critical the times are. And so Drudge puts up the book, and it says, Michael Savage declares we've lost the battle. And take a guess what's happened. People are networking all over the world, 
saying Savage says we've lost the war. Savage has given up. Talk show hosts are saying we've given up. They're copying my message as though they said it, trying to co-op me. That's right. That's what you'd expect from copycats. They're suddenly saying what I said, making believe they said it, and they missed the whole message because they only read headlines. Do you realize that part of the problem is that people don't even read articles anymore? They only read headlines. They don't even read beyond the headline. So it says Michael Savage declares we've lost the battle right away. Right, left, center, they're screaming, Savage, conservative says we've lost, we've lost, they've lost, hurrah. I didn't say we lost the war, did I? I said we lost the battle. And I was referring specifically to the kabuki play of Hillary Clinton's hearing last week, so-called hearing, before the uh, the Stalinist uh, committee, the fake committee, that made believe it was grilling her when it wasn't doing, when it was doing no such thing. Shame on Trey Gowdy, he had me fooled. But I'm today, here's what I want to talk about today, and here's the headline of today's show. We lost the battle, not the war. Why people read the headlines and not the story. It was on this morning, the biggest headline that I've seen. Michael Savage declares we've lost the battle. The emails came pouring in. Savage has given up. There's no hope. If we've lost Savage, we've lost it all. Well, there lies the problem. People only read the headlines. They don't read the story. The real story says I haven't given up. I have great hope. We haven't lost it all. We can win this war. But you ask me, what war am I referring to? It's the war for the heart and soul of this nation and the rest of Western civilization, which is under assault by the government itself. I lay it all out in Government Zero. And before I pause and take your calls, I want to tell you something. My book is not complaints, 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 complaints. It's solution, 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 solutions. 41 action plans to save America. I'm not a defeatist, as my competitors may have you believe. Ella Wheeler Wilcox wrote a poem called Solitude, which begins with laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. Now, my mother used to say that to me when she was sad and alone crying over something terrible in her life. And I had to listen to her and I had to learn to entertain her to keep my poor mother's tears from flooding the room. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. For the sad old earth must borrow its mirth, but has trouble enough of its own. Sing and the hills will answer. Sigh it is lost on the air. The echoes bound to a joyful sound, but shrink from voice and care. Rejoice and men will seek you. Grieve and they turn and go. They want full measure of all your pleasure, but they do not need your woe. Be glad and your friends are many. Be sad and you lose them all. There are none to decline your nectared wine, but alone you must drink life's gall. Feast and your halls are crowded. Fast and the world goes by. Succeed and give and it helps you live, but no man can help you die. There is room in the halls of pleasure for a large and lordly train. But one by one, we, we must all file on through the narrow aisles of pain. What am I saying to you with this poem? Laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. I am not going to sit here saying the war is over. I am not going to be one of these weepy, sad sack Republicans who have given up. I have offered you and do offer you a battle plan. A battle plan as true as necessary for the Allied invasion of Europe. We have been invaded, and we must fight back. 41 plans, 41 actions, and government zero. Now, before I take my first break and invite you to call me at 855-407-282, I want to reiterate something. I am one of the most pronounced voices in the American media. Oh, Yo, you don't hear about me on many places. I'm not allowed on Fox News. I've been blacklisted. Shame on them. You never hear other hosts mention me. Shame on them. But tomorrow, you will see my book on the front octagon tables at Barnes & Noble, the front octagon tables at Walmart, Sam's, Costco, Books A Million, online at Amazon, and at most independent bookstores. I am a true independent, and as such, I am a true American. And I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 